Morning, you guys. So I'm about to make a call to a regional manager. Um, it's a cold call, and I just wanted to record it so you guys could hear it for yourselves and just kind of see how I've been doing it. So again, I've been able to reach out to about 140 uh, people, probably about 75 on uh, phone calls. So this is just how I will do it uh, every single time, when especially when it's a cold call. Uh, so he just messaged me. It's about 7 a.m. where I'm at, he's all the way out on the East Coast, uh, but he just told me to give him a call. So I just wanted to record it so you guys could hear it and just see how I kind of uh, navigate it. I have my notes ready to go, and usually I would have my computer up, just pulled up on his LinkedIn, so I'd be able to see them uh, who I'm talking to and also be looking at their stuff uh, so I can see if I can make a connection. So I'll just go on his LinkedIn real quick, and then we'll just type in his name and see what I can find out about him. So this guy is in the Carolinas. He used to play minor league baseball um, and went to Michigan State. So again, I played strength, I did strength and conditioning, so probably somewhere I will try to throw in that I did strength and conditioning, worked with athletes, and see if I can make a connection there. But he used to be with, uh, but he is with Stryker. Um, so gonna just reach out to him and see what happens. Hey Chris, how are you doing this morning? I'm uh, great. How you doing? Doing good. Thank you so much for taking time to speak with me today. I really appreciate it. Yeah, man. Of course. What you got going on? Yeah, so uh, right now, kind of like I put in the message, i um, 25 years old, uh, single, live here in Scottsdale, originally from Iowa. Um, I've been doing single personal... Single in Scottsdale. Yes, sir. That, that doesn't sound terrible. <laughs> no, it's not the worst life in the world. <laughs> what, part of, uh, what part of Scottsdale are you in? Um, I'm in North Scottsdale area. I actually am yeah. right off of like, uh, I'm in what is called Scottsdale Ranch. Um, cool. So I'm off Shea, but I'm about 15, 20 minutes from Old Town. I used to live right next to Old Town, but now I'm a little. You made, you made it out. Yeah, yeah, I, mean, I survived it. I take it you've been down to Old Town for a while? Yeah, I've been to Scottsdale a few times, but uh, we've had some work trips down there and then nice. everybody's standard bachelor parties down there and stuff. But um, yeah, it's a good time. It, it feels like a good place for like maybe a week or two, and then it's like, oh man, how do you sustain this? So good for you, man. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. You know, it definitely is one of those things you're like, what do I do now after a while? Um, yeah. But yeah. So you're from, you're from Iowa. Did you go down to school down there, or how'd you get down there? Oh, uh, no. So I actually moved out here not knowing a person. I just knew it was warm. Um, I had visited once before, and I was just like, I want to live somewhere that's not negative 12. Uh, in the yeah. winter. So I just packed up all my things. I had been out here just because I was interviewing for occupational therapy school. Um, and I actually did get accepted after I had moved here. So I moved here not knowing. I did get accepted into uh, Midwestern University. Um, but I decided not to go because I didn't want to go into around $150,000 of debt. Um, yeah. so, so I decided not to do that. And then I got hooked up with a uh, guy out here. His name's Jeremy Scott. And so Jeremy is like, he's done stuff for like men's health, bodybuilding.com. He's very high in the fitness world. And so I just cold called him and uh, he gave me an opportunity and uh, I've been working with him for about two and a half years now. So I work out of so his what you, gym. What have you been doing? Uh, so I, he, he does group classes. And so I will teach like his uh, group classes. And then also he allows me to train my own personal clients. So I have my own LLC and train my own people out of his gym as a 1099. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, so it's been a it's been an awesome uh, thing, and he's been great about teaching me, you know, just the side of business, entrepreneurship, doing everything um, over the last two and a half years. And I've had a lot of success, and I'm very fortunate, and feel very lucky. I'm just now looking kind of for that next step in my career. Yeah, 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 yeah. like from a financial standpoint, or just growth, or uh, all of the above. Um, I love the I love the opportunity of growth, um, but also yes, the financial. Um, I do very. I can't complain. Like I work with a lot of high-end CEOs, doctors, um, but a lot of high-end clients. But again, I, there's only so many, so much time in the day, so many uh, programs that I can do to grow as a person. Um, and how are you guys? How are you guys doing with the COVID stuff? Like, have you transitioned everything like online programs, one-on-one coaching? Camps and stuff. How's that work? Yeah, so uh, luckily Jeremy's very big on the internet already, uh, so he's been able to push a lot of the programs out. 
Um, so yeah, so we've closed down here in Arizona. Um, so he's yeah. been able to do that. To be honest, for myself, I still have some online clients that I train, and then I still am able. So we're able to train people at parks or outside. So I'm still okay. able to. I've been uh, traveling to parks and training uh, some people, and then I've also been traveling to some house calls and just been training them outside, um, doing that early in the morning. Um, so that's how I've kind of adjusted. But yeah, a lot of people have done the Zoom stuff. We just like, yeah. especially our people, they don't like the the Zoom. They we write, uh, Jeremy writes a program where it's like, hey, click on it whenever you want. It's already recorded. And then you do the workout whenever it works for you. Yeah, oh, that's cool. Cool, man. Um, okay, so career, like are you looking for, um, like if somebody offered you, all right, come make, you know, come make 200 grand, you'll be in this job for the next couple of years. Or are you more like, I'll, hey, I'll make 100 to make 200 if I'm in like a kind of a, like a career, like 25 is, is a tough position. I'm put myself in your shoes. Like, money is flashy and great. Yes, I sir. Would jump at it, and then also you're like, all right, you know, are you at a point where you're like, uh, I'll look at something if it like is career based, has growth opportunities, stuff like that. Like, where, where's your head at there? Yeah, no, I'm in, I'm in the career based. Um, I keep looking at myself. How, how does it look like in five years for myself, ten years? Um, and that, and that's the whole reason about like the whole fitness. Like I said, I'm doing very well with the whole fitness outcome, but I also look at myself as like, hey, what's it look like? in five years or 10 years, or even when I have a family. Um, and, and also like, I also do my retirement right now, like the 401, or I do my Roth, um, and just stuff like that. And I've just heard of perks with like med devices. Um, and so it's just like things I see that could help my future um, outcome. Yeah, okay. Um, what do you know about, like, like how can I help you the best? What do you know about Striker in particular? And what like kind of questions are you thinking about as you're Looking at a career move. Yes, sir. Uh, so I know Stryker is one of the leaders when it comes to orthopedics, um, especially like surgery trauma. I've talked to, been able to talk to a good amount of reps. I actually have a friend out here. He used to work for Stryker for about six years. His name's Jeff Wirtz. Um, and, and then he went into a startup. Uh, but yeah, so I know you guys are the leader when it comes to orthopedics. Um, I know you guys have uh, one of the top, uh, like you're, I know you're a top 50 uh, company when it comes to like where they rank you guys. Uh, with just a culture and everything. And then also I know uh, I've been told that Stryker's big on athletes. They, they want people who are willing to work, willing to be competitive, um, willing to chase after it. Uh, so that's what I've been told as well uh, for Stryker and what I've learned through this process. Uh, but, uh, and I also was a, a collegiate athlete. I played sm small NAI basketball back in the day. Um, but, the, but the big thing, I guess, Chris, is I'm just asking regional managers, I'm just trying to learn as much from you guys since you've done this, you're, you're in the shoes that I one day would love to be and just see, hey, what advice would you give to a guy who's 25? I know I don't have that B2B sales experience that they a lot of people look for, um, but I have you know, run my own personal training business. I have my numbers from that. Like I've set up my resume to try to display that as best as possible and just would love to hear your advice to someone in my shoes to, hey, how to get break in. And I know I'm looking at an associate sales rep uh, role to, or a uh, clinical specialist to, to learn and uh, take that first year or two to run trays and, and also just learn the industry because I don't know it. Um, but I would just love to hear your feedback and what you think someone in my shoes should do. Yeah, man, I mean, number one is continue to network and learn as much as you can. But there is a point, I think, where you just, in my opinion, uh, if you look at a company like Stryker or there's bigger there's there's a there's probably five or six that I would tell you like yeah, it's worth your time for sure. Yes sir. As far as a career point. Um, but if you look at Striker in particular, it is very, very, very similar to like uh, an athletic department. So the men's basketball team doesn't always know what the women's soccer team is doing. Right? Yep. You don't know I mean you might party with them and see them study hall and stuff, but like you don't you probably don't know every single player and you really don't know what they go through in practice and you really don't know like what their challenges are and all that stuff. So that's kind of similar to Striker. It's a big company. It's a great company. Uh, but you know, you you call me and you're like, "Hey, man, what what you know, what does trauma go through?" I don't really know compared to like what my division is. So we have 16 divisions. So that's I would advise you just keep your ear out on that. Like people telling you things about other divisions. And yeah, that's I, great advice. I, I would I would dive into like where they're where they're from in terms of Striker and what that looks like. But in general, I would tell you network and then get in where you can. Okay. Because if, if you're truly interested in, you know, a career move and, uh, we, yeah, I mean, it, there was a, a kind of a stereotype that we'd like to athletes, but 
I've seen that transition. I've been a striker in nine years. I've seen that really transition from that to simply like, I mean, when I interview people, I love people to drive competitiveness for sure but like where's your motivation where's your drive where's that come from what is your what does your off day look like yes sir are you the guy that's like you know we're about to turn the lights off in the gym there's nobody else in there and you're still shooting you yes. know like that that kind of thing yes that sir can come from you know insurance background that can come from anywhere but um so i i don't care personally about your background in terms of like sales I and mean, you can teach anybody to talk about something but I would tell you, like, you need to play up your resume. It's like you're really starting your own business and working with the public on a one-on-one base. You have to earn their trust. And if you're asking for, you know, CEOs for their money, you're going to go through questions and answers where you, have to, you know, you have to earn their trust. Yes, sir. So, yeah, I mean, you're selling yourself every day is what you would, how you would, you know, move that along. You also play basketball at NAI. And that probably tells me you weren't the most gifted athlete in the world, but you worked your ass off to get on a roster somewhere. Right? Yes, yes, sir. Right? Like, so, stuff like that. that. That becomes your story. So I would advise you there, too. Like, really just start to understand your story and what, you know, obviously you're going to kind of work to whoever you're talking to. But uh, the other thing is, like, you've got to see yourself doing a few things at Striker. Whether, like, my guess is you want to sell. Most people want to come in and sell and not, like, you know, go to our marketing team. We're, we're a sales organization. We love our sales reps. Um, but having the wherewithal, like, what does your associates look like? What does the kind of timeline look like? What do your what do your associate reps do really well? You know, what is their schedule? What is their life like? Yes, sir. Um, I would see it at 25. as like, God, you're coming in to, like, be an assistant for Jeremy again from the bottom. You're being, like, an admin assistant for Jeremy. Yep. To, be, to become Jeremy in, like, two or three years. Yes, sir. That's how it goes. And yep. You, if you're comfy with, like, all right, look, 25, 26, 27-ish, I'm probably going to, it's not going to be the best because I'm going to work just as hard as these reps. If not harder, I'm not going to make their type of money. However, I look at this as like for you, like 28 to 28 to 27 to 35, come make a boatload of money. Yeah. Uh, which is, you know, it's fun. So, <laughs> I, you know, if you're good with that, uh, yes, sir. I think you're in a good spot when you're presenting that to people who have potential openings. It's very much like, you know, here's just kind of what I've learned. I, I love to learn more. I'm willing, I'm coachable. I'm willing to, you know, do what it takes to run out a longer career here. That's that's really the story. Okay. I love it. Um, you know, and I don't know what your, you know, Iowa to Scottsdale. If you're relocatable now from Scottsdale, like which, I would advise you when you're when you're talking to people who have openings, you're, and if, if you're leaning this way, I would be like, hey, I'll, I'd move to Alaska tomorrow to get in a striker. I mean, they. They love that 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 talk that that yeah I'll do anything to get in yes sir um, and then you know you just give yourself some options from there but yeah and and that's what I've been trying to do I'm actually in talk right now with Zimmer Biomet uh, with a yep. place in the Carolinas um, okay. uh, so it, it would either be in uh, Richmond uh, Virginia or it'd be Charlotte or Raleigh North Carolina um, basic go. basically he said he's making associate sales reps he's talking to the board on uh the 15th and then he told me to text him on the 15th to see where it's at and what they've approved um okay. so i'm talking with them i've also been talking with uh right medical yeah. but they just got bought out by striker so i know that um but it was in their shoulder arthroplasty division um so i made friends with one of the sales rep there so i've been talking to the regional um about just going through the process and the start of the process with them and then i'm okay. in also in talk with uh, Zimmer Biomet distributor here in Scottsdale, but I am open to uh, relocating because like I've told myself is like, you know, beggars can't be choosers. I got to get my foot in wherever I need to go. Um, and like yeah. I said, I'm 25. It's not like I'm I'm out anything, so. Man, you'd love Charlotte. I've been in Charlotte for a little bit. You'd love it there. Uh, if, you like, if you like the Scottsdale, it's probably a little bit of a calmer Scottsdale with, with a good you know, kind of a transplant feel like Scottsdale has. That's good to know because um, I've been asking people what it's like out there. Yeah, so you've got a good scene as far as, like, restaurants. Uh, I mean, it's very, like, diverse city. Um, it's a sports-driven city. I mean, the Panthers play right downtown. NASCAR's headquarters there. They have AAA baseball there. Um, so, yeah, you know, the Carolinas isn't loaded with big cities, right? It's yeah. It's basically Charlotte. A little bit of Winston-Salem, a little bit of Charleston, but it's Charlotte. I mean, that's that's it. I love um, it. So it's got the main, the main stuff there. Um, construction's going like crazy as far as apartments a lot of people are moving there that's what i've been so told the, pe 
Yeah, the people that have been in Charlotte for a long time don't love it because it's like a bunch of new, young, transplant, like, you know, those kind of, that kind of feel for yep. you is probably a, a, good, a good fit. <laughs> um, so, yeah, man, I mean, <clears throat> look, right, I mean, the other thing you can distinguish, I mean, Stryker has a ton of ortho trauma OR based divisions. My division doesn't run into the OR. We don't, you know, you need to dive into right and to Zimmer about, you know, what does life look like as far as working with the doctors and, mm. um, you know, are you on call versus scheduled? Yes. Are, are, are you in charge of like four different cities? And then what if two doctors have two cases that need you both between, you know, Roanoke and Charlotte? Like what, what does your life look like? <clears throat> A lot of times in the OR, you'll become like the run man, which is fine. I mean, you got to do it, but they are the ref's job at that. Some of these places is to stir business, grow business. Your job is to like maintain it. Yes. So, right, so you're in there, you're just servicing, like, whatever they need at whatever point. Um, so just diving into, like, what that life kind of looks like a little bit and then where you go from there. But um, And then Stryker, kind of same thing. Like like I said, our, my division has nothing to do with the OR, really. We, we play a lot in, like, uh, beds and stretchers and furniture, and you're dealing with, like, nurse managers, directors. You know, you get to the C-suite. Um, I personally like that because I don't have to talk or cater to a doctor. Yes, sir. And a lot of stuff with Zimmer, Wright, Striker, Ortho, all that stuff is very uh, relationship bias based. So, like, it's it's not the easiest thing in the world to crack uh, a case if they're pretty strong in their relationships. I guess that's similar everywhere. But I would dive in if I was you and, like, what that life kind of looks like for sure. Yes, sir. Awesome, and that's great advice. Because that's uh, so the Carolina ones would be surgical sales, uh, which they yeah. told me would be kind of over everything. He just gave me the quick rundown, but it was like over everything. I'd be learning a lot, and then like you said, the shoulder one that I've talked to the rep, he he does only scheduled uh, surgeries here Monday through Friday mostly. Oh, that's good. Yeah. So he keeps talking about the good li- uh, work life balance here in Scottsdale. Uh, but yeah, I appreciate that. That's great advice because that's one thing I like. If I continue to move forward with these companies, I have put down, hey, what's what's my life look like even the next two or three years? Um, if I make yeah. the move to Charlotte, you know, is it on call all the time or what's it kind of look like there? Yep. Yep. Awesome. Yeah, dive in, man. Make sure it works for you. Um, what, you know, if you don't mind sharing, what's kind of your range if you had a good year doing what you're doing right now as far as financially? Yes, sir. Uh, so I put on, uh, so right now, about 75. Nice. Okay. Good for you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so that, that's where I said, like, and I know most people I've talked to, an associate starts at 60 to 70. Um, yeah. And then, you know, like they get some perks with uh, that as well, like a car, a uh, little car allowance and stuff like that. Um, so that's what I've been told. But again, like that's where I, if I take a, take a cut. You know, uh, the bigger picture for myself, uh, I think, is the is the thing that is most exciting here. Because uh, even like right now, as much as I love being a 1099 and own my own business, it's great. You know, when I make a, if I make 75000 here and make 75000 with a striker, it's not the same because I'm still paying everything. Like I'm a 1099, so I'm paying everything out on my own um, yeah. with everything. So that's the other way I look at it as well. Yeah, for sure. That makes sense. That makes sense. Well, I would tell you too, man, like look at, um, you know, look at what Stryker has as far as job openings in places that you want to live in. Mm-hmm. Um, and you can feel free anytime to reach out to me, even text me or anything um, to ask about what that division or what's going on there. It's no problem. Awesome. Um, I know on my team, we don't have, we've got 10 reps. Um, we have an associate who's rolling with us in the Carolinas. He lives in Charlotte. Okay. Um, he's going to be a rep in January, so we don't we don't have any openings on the team, but um, we would probably have an associate come January, February. Okay. Um, but we don't have a whole lot going on right now. That's as far as if you're looking to jump right now, we don't have much. But that's not to say, you know, obviously other divisions and stuff like that have a lot open. Yes, sir. And and I'm always just trying to get you know I've been kind of put on like I just I've talked to three other divisions. They kind of are like, hey, we'll put you on the the bench just in case yeah. things start opening up. And, th- and that's all I'm trying to do because I know this is a crazy weird time. You know, I know a lot of people aren't hiring and there's a lot of freezes going on. So, you know, just trying to, like you said, network and, you know, if there is an opportunity in the future, I'd love just to have my name thrown up there. Yeah, man, for sure. For sure, for sure. Well, just let me know how I can help. It's, uh, 
happy to connect or give you any advice or anything like that. Anything I can do, just let me know. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Chris. I really appreciate all your, your time and your advice. It really means a lot. You got it, man. No problem at all. All right. Well, I hope you have a great rest of your day and drive safe. Yeah, you too. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Bye. All right, you guys, so that was a normal call that I usually have with these guys. Again, as you saw, a lot of it's just connecting, just talking with them. Um, and he was, a, he was a cool dude. He's one of the coolest guys right away who's like willing to talk. Usually when it comes to my phone calls, I'm having to kind of like pull some teeth or be like, what do you want? Um, and then I have to, you know, because again, their time is very uh, thought out and they have to, uh, they only have a small window. So I need to have questions ready to go for them and you know I've, I've learned enough now my question is basically just how do I break in um, it used to be like what's the pros what's the cons what do you love about the job what do you not so much love about the job um, you know like any advice to me like I had like a whole list of like five six questions that I would ask them I've talked to enough people I already know the pros and the cons they all say the same thing pretty much uh, so now I'm just trying to figure out how do I get in. Uh, like I said, right now this is the COVID time, so everything's on hiring freezes. I'm on the bench for like three other jobs that they're like, we like you, we just need, we'll just wait, and if anything opens up, we'll let you know. Um, but yeah, just continue to network. Like I said, he's out in the Carolinas, um, so he would love, I would love that. Um, I've never been, but you know, people keep telling me it'd be great. Uh, but again, just networking with people all over the US, just trying to get my foot in the door, because like that, yeah, you know, he's been to Scottsdale, he might know some of the Scottsdale reps. So if I message people, then again, if there's an opening, like right now I could have three guys from Stryker message the guy from the Scottsdale area to throw my name in to give me an opportunity. Uh, so again, that's all you're trying to do is get yourself an opportunity. Um, but again, I'm about three and a half, four months into this process. Um, it's July 10th currently. Um, and yeah, it's just, it's one of those processes that just takes a long time because here I'll just show you real quick. You know, here's my notebook. Let's see where it's at. Um, so these are all the people since I've started. And there's Darrell. So 417, 410. So this is when I started really recording was uh, right here, which is 410, so April 10th, and it is now July 10th. So it's actually been April, May, June, July. So right on month four right now. And these are the uh, all the people that I've talked to. So basically, right there and all this are all notes of people I've talked to had phone calls with and I kept it on my computer and now what my next step will be is I'll go on my computer I will write down notes about our conversation I'll kind of take some of this off of put it on that Excel sheet go over what we talked about and then I will also uh, be sending him a follow-up message just saying hey thanks for your time really appreciate it Hope you have a great rest of your week and hope to stay in touch. Something super simple like that. That way I'm always uh, staying in touch. And then again, I can reach back out in a couple weeks and just be like, hey, just want to check in or just give you an update on what's going on. So hope this video helped. This was my phone call with a regional manager doing a cold call. I uh, never had talked to him before, never had met him before uh, and just reached out to LinkedIn. He gave me his number and we made it happen. So. Hope this helps. Hope you guys uh, have a great rest of your week. If you have any questions, please feel free to comment on here or hit me up on Instagram or YouTube or Facebook, whatever it is, Jacob McLaughlin Fitness, because again, I am still a personal trainer. And so you guys can just ask me any questions you'd like. And if you haven't, please press that like and subscribe button. I'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks.